Hello, my name is David Love, and I'm a piano teacher in Rexburg, Idaho, where I am also the director of a quickly growing studio of over 100 students. As a teacher, the iPad has immensely improved the way we teach music. Students are more engaged, and parents are delighted with the progress they are seeing. Technology has its flaws, as it always has, but no need to despair. When we learn to use it as an effective tool in our teaching, we will not only see results in our students' progress, but we'll also see them light up with joy as they discover music. In this webinar, iPad 101, I will share tips and tricks for better usage and functionality, so you can have a more effective experience with your iPad. This presentation is designed for piano teachers, but the principles we'll learn here today can still be applicable to all iPad users including the parents of the students you teach. So feel free to share this link with them. Today we will cover the hardware. Understanding the function and names of the physical buttons will assist you in knowing how to perform certain actions and shortcuts. We'll cover multitasking and how to improve battery life by closing apps. iPad gestures will help you to quickly access apps and tools to avoid wasting time in lessons. And then I'll also talk about two helpful resources that you can use as self-learners to troubleshoot problems and learn more about how to maximize iPad efficiency. In the last portion, I'll cover other cool tips and tricks that are not as commonly used, but very helpful. Feel free to fast forward to the section if you feel competent with the previous points. Let's get started. The first button to be aware of is the sleep-wake button located at the top of your iPad next to the camera. Tap this button to put your display to sleep and conserve battery power when it's not in use. Know that the iPad isn't turned off, just asleep, so alarms and notifications will still be able to come through. On the front of the iPad near the bottom is the home button. Pressing the home button will take you to the home screen. It also provides other shortcuts I'll share with you later. On the side of the iPad near the camera and sleep wake button, you'll find the side switch and volume buttons. Press up or down to change your volume and then hold it down for a second or two and it will mute your iPad. A cool trick is to use your volume button to take a picture. Open your camera app, point and tap the volume button. You could just use the white button on the screen as well. The side switch can have one of two functions. First, it can be used to silence notifications, the ringer, or apps. Second, you can change it so that it will lock or unlock the screen rotation. If you see this bell icon when you slide the side switch, it will control the ringer. If it is silenced, you won't be able to hear apps like Piano Maestro, and this can be confusing for your students. Be sure to check and see if your iPad is silenced unintentionally. If you see this lock, then your switch will turn the screen lock on and off. When you turn your iPad upside down, the screen will flip around automatically for you unless you lock the screen direction. To change the side switch function, go to the settings app on your iPad, then look for the phrase, use side switch to, and then select lock rotation or mute. I choose lock rotation on my iPad so that my students don't accidentally mute the apps they are using. As a side note, while you're in the settings section, you might just need an update which will improve your user experience. Simply tap on software update and it will let you know if you have a new update available. Perhaps you are an excellent multitasker. Unfortunately, I don't have that gift. But the iPad does, and you can run as many apps in the background as you want to. In fact, you could pretty much have all of your apps open at the same time. To see what apps you have open, double tap the home button. When you do this, all the apps turn into a carousel that you can view by swiping left to right or right to left. To see what apps you have open, double tap the home button. When you do this, all the open apps turn into a carousel and you can view them by swiping right to left. Now this isn't necessarily a good thing. When apps are opened, they stay open. With several open apps, the battery drains faster and memory is taken up so the app you're using might run a little sluggish. 
To close an app, swipe the app up with one finger. Since you can see one app in the middle and part of an app on the left and another on the right, you could save some time by closing up to three at one time. Close your apps often to improve your iPad's performance. iPad gestures. I've already showed you a few iPad gestures like swiping left or right, up or down. Others include tapping, dragging, and another is to pinch with two fingers in or spreading two fingers apart. One of the more important gestures I use is for organizing apps on my screen. Instead of a tap or swipe, I'm going to hold an app for a few seconds until they all start to wiggle. Then I can drag the apps to the desired location. In this case, I want to move Piano Maestro to the far bottom for ease of access since I use it on a daily basis with my students. If I have enough apps that fit a particular theme, I can create folders by holding one app over the other one. Then I can add as many other apps to it as I wish. If you want to delete an app, tap the X in the top left corner. This can help free up room if your iPad is getting full. To return to your regular iPad use, tap the home button once and the apps will stop wiggling. Now, if you need some more help or are looking for more ideas, in the new iOS there is an app called Tips. Read a couple of these a day to get more out of your iPad. If you're having other problems or you just want to learn more, download the free iPad user guide in the iBooks app. You can then search for what you need help with. Are you ready for other cool tips and tricks? The purpose of these tips and tricks are to hopefully improve your use of the iPad and piano lessons so it's a highly functional and not a time wasting tool for you. In this section of the webinar, I'm going to cover search and Siri for quick access to almost anything. App Store tips beyond just downloading your apps, but sharing apps with students and keeping your own apps up to date, including how to do automatic updates. And then how to use guided access to keep students focused. Last of all, I will show you how to take a screenshot for record keeping and taking screenshots, photos, and videos and turning them into the ultimate progress reports. Search is a feature that can easily be accessed by swiping down with one finger from the middle of the screen. When you do this, the search bar appears at the top. You then tap in the search bar and an on-screen keyboard will appear. You can search for anything from an app to a song in your library. For example, when Austin comes to a lesson, I can quickly pull up a background track to a method book song to help him work on his timing. Note that to have music to search for, you'll first need to upload it to iTunes on your computer and then sync it with your iPad. That's a discussion for another day. To keep your student engaged when using the iPad, make sure they always have something to do. If you are doing a search, make sure they are playing through a piece or working on something specific, or you could let them get their hands on the iPad as you give them instructions. Search is an amazing time-saving tool and gives you access and information at the command of your fingertips. Siri, however, is a smart computer that can do the same and more at the command of your voice. To access Siri, hold down the home button until you hear a double tone. Then speak. Ask Siri what you want to know or what information you need to access. Here's an example. Remind me to send an invite to piano parents. Here's your reminder. Shall I create it? You can also ask Siri to set a timer for note reading challenges with students. Set a timer for one minute. Okay, I set it. Just remember, a watched iPad never boils. Maybe you have a student playing a piece by Beethoven. Find Moonlight Sonata on YouTube. Here's what I found on the web for Moonlight Sonata. Do your students need help with a composer study on Beethoven? When was Beethoven born? 
Ludwig van Beethoven was born December 17th, 1770. There are many other applications for Siri, so have fun and explore. Siri can be turned on or off in the settings by first going to General, then to Siri, and then turning it on or off. There are some other options for Siri as well. The App Store is probably generally understood as the location where you would download apps. Here are a few extras that can be useful to you. In the top right, I can search for any app. I'll search for Piano Maestro, and when the app comes up, it says Open. This is because I've already installed it. When I tap on the app icon itself in the App Store, you will see the share icon in the top right corner. It looks like a box with an arrow coming out of it. When I click on it, it gives me options for sharing via email, Twitter, or Facebook. I can also copy the link and paste it anywhere I'd like to. You can use this feature to share with parents of students who have an iPad at home to encourage them to dive into the world of music education apps. You may have noticed that one of the options to share says gift. If the app has a cost, you can gift it to a student. Since Piano Maestro is free for teachers and for their connected students, you cannot gift it. You can only share it. Flashnote Derby, on the other hand, is a relatively inexpensive app that I use frequently in my studio to drill note recognition. For a small cost, I can gift it to a student that I think will benefit from using it at home. Many teachers offer incentives such as candy and prizes for practice. Consider printing out app icons to put into your music store, and if a student earns enough points, or in our case, Bach Bucks, let them buy an app that you can then gift to the parent. The next app store tip I want to share with you is how to update an app, and then how to do automatic updates. In the app store, the bottom far right icon is labeled updates. When you tap on it, you'll see all of the apps that need updating. In this screenshot, you will see that there is an update pending for Piano Maestro. Listed next to it are several new changes and improvements. Update your iPad apps often to have the latest and greatest tools to work with. Also, updates usually come with a few bug fixes. Keep your apps running smoothly by updating frequently. When I started using lots of apps on my iPad, I realized I couldn't keep up with the updates because they were released so frequently. Then I discovered a feature in settings called Automatic Updates. To turn on Automatic Updates, go to Settings, iTunes and App Store, Automatic Downloads, and then turn on Updates. This way, you'll never have to update your apps again. It happens by itself. Some teachers choose to let a student come early or stay after their lesson for music tech time. I've noticed that while many students can keep themselves busy with their app assignments during this time, there are some who tend to easily drift into other apps I didn't even know I had. This is when guided access comes in handy. Guided access locks a user into one specific app and requires a password to exit out of it. To turn on guided access, Go to Settings, General, Accessibility, then Guided Access. Turn it on and set a password you can remember. You only need to do this part once. Then go into any app of your choice and tap the Home button three times to activate Guided Access. To deactivate it, push the Home button three times again and enter your password and then tap End in the top left corner. When turning guided access on in an app, there are a few options to give the user more or less control. By default, the home button is deactivated. This means they can't exit out of the app. You can also make it so they can't touch certain parts of the screen. You'll see here in the bottom right corner, I can set a timer for however long I feel they should work in a particular app. Once they've finished, I can reassign another app. Screenshot. A screenshot is when you take a picture of what you are looking at on your screen. For demonstration purposes, I will be using the app SproutBeat. SproutBeat is an app full of fun and colorful music theory worksheets. Using the pen tool in the app, you can write your answers on the screen. Once a student has successfully filled out the entire worksheet, 
I can take a screenshot to save a record so I know how they did. To take a screenshot, tap the sleep wake button at the same time as the home button. The screen will flash like a camera and a photo of the worksheet has now been saved to my photos app. Once inside the photos app, I'll tap on my screenshot. Now is where I'll show you the ultimate progress report idea. Remember the share icon I told you about earlier? Look for it in the bottom left corner of the screen. When you tap on it, your share options appear, and in this case we'll tap on email. Almost magically, the image appears in a drafted email. Just enter a short message, enter the parent's email address, and send it their way. If you want to go one step further, insert a photo of your student giving a thumbs up at the piano. You can also use the same idea for videos under one minute in length. I sometimes do this demonstrating skills or technique assignments. Or simply just use it to share the highlights of your lesson. By sharing screenshots, photos, and videos, you'll improve your communication with parents and therefore increase your attention. Now, I've shared a few tips and tricks with you today and I hope that they will benefit you and your studio in some form or another. If you are so new to the iPad that all of this seems overwhelming, just try one thing at a time until you've figured it all out. So what's next? One app at a time. Plug into the power of apps not just because of today's tech savvy generation. Do it for you so that you can continually build your skills as a creative teacher, musician, and human being. Advice. Launch your iPad Piano Studio one app at a time or one skill at a time. Leela Javis, author of the iPad Piano Studio. For more help and advice, try out Leela's book. Through the end of December, you can save 20% with the code IPPS20SAVE. Visit iPadPianoStudio.com for more information. And then check out these other resources. Go to JoyTunes.com and click on resources for other webinars and tutorials as well as guides for Piano Maestro. Visit My Piano Studio's website and Facebook page and of course be sure to like us. Then also visit Leela's blog 88pianokeys.me. Last of all remember to connect on Facebook for more ideas and help on your iPad Piano Studio. Go to facebook.com and search JoyTunes Teachers or just type in the URL on the screen. Thank you for watching this webinar, iPad 101 Tips and Tricks for Better Usage and Functionality. See you next time.